but on this occasion I shall tell you about a demo. Now, two great nations in the other world are side by side. And in places where a river divides, our national holidays are only four days apart. So there is the Freedom Festival between Windsor and Detroit, and there's the Friendship Festival between Buffalo, New York, and Fort Erie, Ontario. This was a demo that was at that festival. And we were camped on the Niagara River between Fort Erie, the metropolis, and Fort Erie, the fort. It was a good demo. It's a good demo when the camping is free and they feed you well. <laughs> but there was a fly in the ointment. Fort Erie the Fort is a manned fort. <coughs> and young gentlemen earn money in the summertime showing people how uh, a fort was run during the time when it was in operation as a fort. And they had to pass us to get to work and go back and forth and they were making disparaging remarks about, and I quote, those weirdos. <laughs> we were not wearing wool uniforms in 95 degree temperature, but <laughs> we were those weirdos. And if they'd just done it one or twice, we wouldn't have objected. But by Sunday afternoon, Fiona had had enough. Now, picture a little old arthritic British grandmother. She said, that's a tap of fort. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought it was a good idea. So we turned out the encampment, every man, woman, and child of us, and everything that even remotely resembled a weapon. <laughs> there was a six-month-old brandishing an inflated sword. <laughs> there was one of Tancred's siege machines intended for feasts to propel uh, missiles during feasts. <laughs> Trundling along among us with ammunition, grapes, <laughs> Grape shot, nuts, nuts to you, <laughs> and she climbed on James, which is what she called her electric scooter, and led us into battle. Now I'm going to have to take a little detour into the modern world to explain a little bit about this. At one time she told me that when she drove out of a city, she drove as fast as the car would go. I thought she was pulling my leg. <laughs> she meant it. <laughs> I had occasion to ride with her to visit one of her daughters. I am not ashamed to say my knuckles were white. <laughs> we heard a siren. And she stopped that thing in less space than you can travel a, a car going at that pace. And she did not lay rubber. When the policeman came up to the window, there sat a little old British grandmother with her, what can I do to help you dear?" <laughs> look on her face, blink, blink. <laughs> and he looked at the car which was a K-car <laughs> station wagon that looked like it probably would not reach its destination. And he looked at the driver, and you could see what he was thinking. If the car was capable of it, the driver was not. And it, she could. 
I made an error, ma'am. Go ahead. And he let her go. We went at a fairly decorous pace until we got over the horizon. Whereupon she hit warp again and said, <laughs> You know, dear, they all do that. <laughs> well, she drove James just like she drove the car. Veil streaming behind. And the rest of us walking. And she had to stop every so often to let the rest of us catch up. We had a police escort on that day. The squad car was not going straight because its inhabitant was laughing too hard. <laughs> we attacked that fort. Some of the uh, more energetic warriors went over the walls, led by a gentle who was wearing a great kilt in the regimental manner where he was not wearing plate. And let's put it this way. McLeod is not McQuiet. <laughs> we took that fort because for all their fancy drilling, the young gentlemen didn't have the foggiest idea of what to do if they were attacked. <laughs> Baroness Ariadne served as our herald, and she said, we had come to rape, pillage, burn, and rape. We liked rape. <laughs> and from over in the ranks, a voice pipes up, Me first! <laughs> the people who had paid to get in were literally rolling on the ground. I saw it. I was there, I believe it, laughing. <laughs> we hauled down the Union Jack and put up the flag of Ethelmar. <laughs> and the barony of the Rhetoric Hale, which were uh, the people from the other side, and the heraldry of Eldemir and Rising Waters, and Rising Waters, and Rising Waters, and Rising Waters, because she was a herald, and I think the barony of Rising Waters has more heraldry belonging to it than any other unit in the entire known world. <coughs> We divvied the fort. Eldermere got the kitchen and the, the necessarium, and the Ritter Hale had everything else. Now, I think that we got the better part of the deal because you can't survive without a kitchen or a washroom, but you can survive without everything else. And the committee wanted us to do it again next year. <laughs> it didn't happen. A hall burned down and we had to postpone coronet tournament. And the makeup date was the 1st of July. And in Eldermere, if there is crown of any sort, everything else shuts down because we do love to support the people who are going to rule us. And the following year, there was a different committee, and they wanted us to pay to do it. Mm -mm. No, no way. But I have a dream. Maybe you've heard that someplace else. And my dream is this. With a more enlightened committee, someday when the 1st of July comes on a Friday and the 4th of July comes on a Monday, let's do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and in honor of the lady who was grandmother to us all. But certainly we wouldn't tell the young gentleman. 